Hello, Accelerated Math 7 8 students. We are working on Module 11, and this is Lesson 11. In my comp book, the title is called Slicing a Right Rectangular Prism with a Plane, and it's going to be on whatever page you last ended on. Um, today, I am going to try one thing different, and then we are going to decide between the two types that you like the best, and I'll show you in just a second. So, slicing a right rectangular prism with a plane, okay? And here are the notes that we are going to be working on. And these notes that we are working on right here, the only difference that you see on this one is that I printed them out on paper. So what I am trying this time is printing them on paper, which will have to be in black and white, or using the iPad, which has the colors on it and it makes it um, a little bit more easy to um, see the difference between the different parts of notes. So your vote in between this is to get better at using the iPad so you can have the color, or me print them out as black and white, and then I just talk through them um, through a piece of paper on the black and white. I'm going to stick with typing them because typing them goes a lot quicker for me. So your vote is color on the iPad or black and white on a piece of paper. That's what you have to decide. Okay, so slicing a right rectangular prism with a plane. Um, basically, what I want you to start visual, visualizing is a right rectangular prism is like a Kleenex box. It's like a stick of butter. We've been talking about this a little bit, okay? And so what you have to do now is envision that we are going to be cutting that shape, okay? And slicing means that you're actually cutting into it, all right? And so if we take a look at this, it says the goal. The goal for today. Today we will learn about slicing an object and figuring out what is the outcome. Okay? So we're actually going to take a three-dimensional figure and we're going to slice it. And your job is to take the two slices apart and look at what shape is created by the slice. All right? Um, question that I want you to be thinking about is what does a slice represent after being sliced from the object? That's the question that you need to be, be able to answer by the end of the lesson today. Things to know. Um, things to know. A solid in geometry is a three-dimensional shape of a given shape. Okay? Um, solids are basically describing a three-dimensional anything. So it could be a prism, it could be a pyramid, it could be a cube, it could be a sphere. That's what a solid is because it's a three-dimensional shape. Um, the reason why I say of a given shape is because you'll always say, okay, well, what is the three-dimensional shape for a rectangle? Well, the three-dimensional shape for a rectangle is a rectangular prism. The three-dimensional shape of a square is a cube. The three-dimensional shape of a circle is a sphere. So that's why I'm saying it's the three-dimensional shape of a given shape. Okay? Um, moving on, building blocks. Building blocks of geometry. We are getting into some real heavy-duty geometry. It is going to lead us into our Math 8 geometry, and we're just going to keep going from there. So building blocks of geometry is what makes a shape three-dimensional? So I want you to think of a stack of Post-it notes. One Post-it note by itself is not three-dimensional. But when you put the whole bunch of Post-it notes on top of each other together, it becomes three-dimensional. And here is an example of this, and I'm sorry, um, it's not color because I don't have a color copier, but you can imagine this is one post-it note. And so if I take my stack of post-it notes, here's a real-life post-it note right here. So this little paper is supposed to represent this guy. So this is a post-it note, okay? If I take one, it's a two-dimensional figure. It has width and it has length. However, if I take a whole bunch of these and stack them on top of each other, then I get something that looks like this. And you can notice just from the shadows that this one has depth. This one's flat and this one has depth. These are stacks of these, okay? And so if I turn this, you can see the depth, okay? So I have width, I have length, and now I have depth. And so you can see the difference that this is a two-dimensional figure and this one in my right hand is a three-dimensional figure, okay? So the building blocks of geometry is that if you just have one single slice, then it's 2D. But if you have a whole bunch of slices put on top of each other, it becomes 3D, okay? And so 
what we're learning is we can say that three-dimensional shapes can be created by stacking the slices of the original shape. So here's your original shape. When we stack them, it now becomes three-dimensional, and it looks like this. Okay? All right, moving forward. Why we're always coming back to that word slices. Okay, in geometry, slices represent planes. Now, I'm not talking about the kind that you fly around in the sky on. Okay, we're talking about mathematical planes, geometrical planes. Planes do not have a definition, but they are used as symbols to represent a certain area in space. A plane is a representation of a flat surface, one that extends without edges. For us to help us visualize this, it looks like a large sheet of paper. So this piece of paper right here that I'm using as an example could represent a plane because it is a plane that takes up space and it keeps going in all directions forever. And that's called a plane, okay? So, um, something that you need to think about is if two planes are parallel, so I have this one right here, okay? And let me take this up because I know that's distracting. So I have this one right here, and if I, let's say, turn this one over, and I have this one right here, these two planes, as you can kind of see in the video, are considered parallel to each other as long as they um, never touch. So they will never collide because they are going in the same direction on top of each other. So let's read this definition. It says, two planes are parallel if they do not meet. So remember that planes go in all directions, right? All directions forever, okay? So these two planes that are, one is on top, one is below, are going in the same direction forever, and they won't ever touch. So because of that, they are considered parallel. Now where they are not parallel, they collide, okay? And so what you need to be aware of on this one is two planes are perpendicular if one plane contains a line that is perpendicular to the other plane. Okay, so let's look at this picture right here. This picture is kind of important. So I'm gonna to try to zoom in on this picture because it's really kind of a cool picture and it really shows us this as well. So I apologize for the blurriness for just a minute, but I really want you to see what this picture is showing. Okay, so we have this picture of two planes, okay? One of the planes is actually sitting like this, that doesn't help. One of the planes is actually sitting up and down, the other one is going side to side. This plane right here that you can see is the vertical plane because it's going up and down. This plane right here is sitting horizontally because it goes side to side. The definition of perpendicular plane is that they intersect at a line. Do you see the line right there? And what that means is every point on the horizontal plane and the vertical plane that are intersecting touches each other. And that's why they are called perpendicular planes, okay? And it's really kind of cool. This line tells us exactly where the two um, planes are intersecting or colliding, okay? And so the reason why we are learning about that is because if a plane intersects another plane, then you will find out that there is a slice or a plane section that gets created, okay? So the plane section of a figure consists of all the points where the plane meets the figure. Another name for plane section is a slice. So let's go back up here to the top and look at our title. It says, Slicing a Right Rectangular Prism with a Plane. Okay. So I'm going to draw a picture for a minute because I want you guys to try to get an idea of what we're doing. So if I draw you, and again, not drawn to scale, very rudimentary drawing, right, because it's free and I'm trying to do my best very quickly. But let's say that we have a stick of butter. I know, it's not this, but it's me. So you've got what you've got. All right, so here's my stick of butter. When I take a butter knife, use the tray that the butter sits in, right? And if I take a butter knife 
And I take my butter knife, and here's my butter knife right here, right? And it has a little handle that I hold on to, right? Okay. If I take my butter knife and I push down right here onto the stick of butter, what is going to happen to that butter? Am I taking a slice of it? Okay? And hopefully you guys can visualize this. The answer to that question is yes, I am taking a slice. If I slice that butter right there going straight down, what do you predict the face or the slice will look like? What shape will it look like? If you said a square or a rectangle, depending on it, probably a rectangle because this is a rectangular prism, if you say that the slice is going to look like a rectangle, then you're correct because everybody knows. You can visualize taking a pad of butter is what they call it, is where you take a butter knife and you slice off a chunk and you spread it on your toast or on your baked potato or whatever, yes? So this is considered a slice of a rectangular prism, okay? And so our job in this lesson today is we will learn about slicing an object and figuring out what the outcome is. So we're going to be doing this to some three-dimensional figures. You need to know what those slices represent. And what I'm trying to remind you is that the slices represent geometric planes, okay? The area that is covered by a certain amount of space. Okay? And you'll see that when we have our practice problems in class together. Um, it is also my goal to have some actual solid material and some other tools that will help you be able to slice. I am going to tell you there will be no butter, butter knives involved. There will be no knives or any type of metal substance involved at all. There's something else that I can think that is perfectly safe for kids. All right, my darlings, I hope this lesson was kind of fun for you. Um, go back to your question really quick. What does a slice represent after being sliced from an object? I hope all of you can answer that, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye!